We are being recorded, and that way anyone who could not come here today mm -hmm. can see it on YouTube later. So exactly. thank you. <laughs> Benvenuti, everyone. I'm Natalie Smarjossi, President for Italian Portland. Thank you for joining and welcome to our event, a farmhouse stay in uh, a farmhouse holiday stay in Giove, Umbria, in the green heart of Italy. It's great to have you all here today. And to start out with, I would like to introduce our speaker, Alice Fazzoni. And I first met Alice in her Casale della Croce, a vacation farmhouse in Giove, Umbria, Italy. So I reached out to her to ask if she would do a presentation for us about her experience purchasing and renovating the farmhouse as a vacation holiday getaway, and to tell us about what a farmhouse stay is really like. Alice lives in Portland, Oregon and Rome, Italy. She is a native Italian. She was born in Rome, but came to the US to attend college and study archeology. span She runs her business, Casale Deli Corce and Divora Destinations Travel, and is also an event photographer. She's a really busy lady for sure. <laughs> Okay, and to give you an overview of the event, I thought I would just run through um, a little bit of what to expect, and then Alice will get started. So, have you ever dreamed of a vacation in the enchanted countryside of Italy, a splendid place immersed in the rolling green hills of a charming village in a centuries old farmhouse with an olive grove and stunning views of the valley below? Sounds really great, doesn't it? <laughs> And so I'm here today with Alice Falzoni at her beautiful 1700s farmhouse in Jove, Umbria. And Alice purchased the farmhouse from the original family that owned it since the 1700s in 2022, a year ago. She then converted the property to a vacation farmhouse driven by a passion for preserving the cultural value of Italian properties and sharing her um, sharing these special places with travelers who are fascinated by authentic Italy. The farmhouse is located in the medieval town of Giove and love, lovely Umbria, surrounded by the fabled cities of Bomarzo, Narni, and Amalia. The town of Giove is, has a fantastic medieval castle and stunning views of the Umbrian countryside in central Italy. Alice will tell us her story of acquiring the property handling all the renovations, and most importantly, what a farmhouse stay experience is really like in this part of Italy. And for those of you who attended our event last September, we have a brief update from Amber and Dahl Tib, the opening of their restaurant that we saw um, in progress in September is just around the corner. Their restaurant will be called La Chiave delle Sapore, the key to flavor. Also in Jove, and it's just around the corner from Alice, where we are right now. And also, I forgot to mention, we're actually in Alice's Casale, and you can see the back of it, the beautiful fireplace and the rustic <laughs> um, Umbrian style windows. It's very beautiful here. <laughs> Um, and so then the presentation will run for about 40 minutes, then we'll have about 20 to 25 minutes available for Q&A. So please post your questions in the chat. Once the presentation is finished, we will answer as many, um, as many questions as time allows. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alice. Thank you, Natalie, our fearless leader. I am going to try to keep this as fun and visually attractive as possible so that you can see the entire process of um, finding uh, your, deciding what your dream is about living in Italy, finding your dream and grabbing it and making it yours. So you can see right now uh, outside the windows, that's a, that's a door, that's a window. Uh, it's rather dark and that is because we are eight hours ahead uh, of the Pacific um, uh, Pacific Standard Time. So I made a really short uh, two or three minute video that I would love to show you right now so that you can see the entire property during different seasons and different times uh, of the day. I do narrate it um, a bit, so uh, make sure that your volume is uh, up enough so that you can hear it. I'm just going to run this video now and then we'll be right back here with me and, uh, and and we can be live 
Again, I'm going to share the screen. I'm really excited for you to see this video. Um, and here we go. See you soon. Ciao, everyone, and welcome to Casale delle Querce. I am very excited for you to be here and to see these photographs and this little video about our beautiful farmhouse in Umbria. We are located just below the village of Giove here in uh, Lower Umbria. We're only about one hour, one hour and 15 minutes north of Rome, and it is all about the outdoors. As you can see from your main master bedroom window, you have a sweeping view of the entire valley below. The Tiber River is down there. It's the same river that flows all the way to Rome and to the Mediterranean. Sunsets here are really incredible. Great time for you, your family, and your friends to gather and have a glass of local wine in the afternoon overlooking that view and the sunset. This is the main stone farmhouse uh, portion. This is the historic portion. It contains the great big kitchen that anyone can use of your group, a master bedroom upstairs and a small den upstairs with the sofa sleeper and a master bathroom and half bath as well. As you look up the hill from the main stone farmhouse, up our driveway, I should say, you will walk in what seems like acres and acres and acres of land, which is in effect what we have. We have 10 acres of green uh, grass and fruiting trees and, and olive trees. It's just so peaceful and beautiful here. All you hear is the wind and the birds chirping. See that right there you see is the other section of our property, which is the swimming pool area. Swimming pool area in the summer is just so incredible. The water is inviting and the plants have all bloomed. And the air conditioning is nice and cool inside of all of our spaces. Look at the sunset from the swimming pool area. And of course, we are lit up at night for a little extra ambiance and romance. As you make your way back down the driveway from the pool to the main stone farmhouse, usually in the evenings, I love to gather with friends and family or have our in-house sommelier or wine expert create a very special wine and food pairing event, either sitting outside under the awning at sunset, or we can even have lunch inside or outside sometime during your stay. While you enjoy the sun as it sets towards the west, as you can see here over the hills, you will hear different kinds of birds coming and going. The wind will be blowing slightly, cooling you in the summer months. And all you have to do is come here and find peace, reconnect with yourself and your loved ones. See you soon. Ciao. Woo. Thank you so much for listening to that and viewing that little video. Can you still hear me, everyone? Thumbs up. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Um, it's, a, it's a complicated video system here, but we're making it work. Um, I'm glad that you enjoyed that video. I really wanted to make sure I made it so that you could see this property in the different seasons and the different light, um, because it's definitely worth it to see photographs and video at different times of year, because we are open year round for your um, for your holiday. So and now we are actually going to start the presentation. I'm going to breeze right through it. You're going to love it. There are going to be more pictures and um, um, lots of your questions may even be answered. Um, let me get the slides going so that it's still very visual. Okay. Here we go. You should see me. 
little perhaps and then uh and then my my slide presentation here so that should be really cool let's see if it actually moves forward so welcome to our uh stone historic farmhouse i will let you know how i uh found it and and what we've done to it and how we attract and how we uh entertain our guests when uh, when they come here to stay so a little bit about me just so you know who the heck i am uh, my name is Alice, and that's Italian for Alice, spelled the same way. Um, I grew up all over the world thanks to my parents who worked for the Italian embassy. So I'm a bit of a world traveler. And it's funny because growing up in Indonesia and Japan, then back to Rome, then Venezuela, then ending up in, in Arizona and Oregon, and then finally here in Jove, Umbria, uh, it's funny how life turns turned me right back around to come right back to my roots. Um, I'm happy about that because I have, uh, I have lots, lots of information in my head and really my heart seems to be right back where, where I was born here in Umbria or here in Italy, I should say, because I'm from Rome. Um, so nice to meet you. A little bit, a uh, tiny little bit of information I'm going to have. I and Natalie will have information about how to get a hold of me for either the farmhouse or my culinary tours that I give here in Italy later on and via links. So you don't have to worry about this slide at the moment, but I wanted to show you a fun photograph of uh, me in Sicily with uh, a big group of, of, uh, uh, of friends who came over um, to Sicily for one of my culinary tours. Anyways, just a little bit more about me because that way you know who I am. Here we go. This is the highlight, or this is the timeline of what we're going to talk about in this presentation. And we have about 20 minutes and I'm gonna go over lots of stuff. So I look forward to your questions later. So Umbria, as you can see from this map, Umbria is right in the middle of Italy and it is called the green heart of Italy. It actually kind of looks like a little heart, doesn't it? And it's right in the middle of, of Italy, as I said. And on the map to the right, that is the actual region of Umbria, zoomed in. And I do not apologize for choosing a map that shows you wine, because that is just delicious around here. But just so you know, Jobe, which is our little village, is way down at the bottom um, of the, the region. So we are in the southern area, uh, southern, uh, southern half of Umbria, which means we are closest to Rome, which is very convenient, as I'll show you next. These are some slides, just a handful of slides of Umbria. Why do they call it the green heart of Italy? Well, because it's very green. Tuscany used to be this green, and then it progressed to being, you know, hills with cypress trees, and, and all the trees were were cut down in, in history to build uh, their beautiful uh, mansions and palaces. Well, Umbria, for some reason, they, they, they stopped at that. Um, they, we do have fields, but we also have lots of forests where we forage for mushrooms and truffles. And, uh, and we have the pleasure of seeing these views. Here's another example of an area in Umbria. I took this picture a couple of years ago when my parents were driving me around uh, some, some of the smaller villages in Umbria. It's called Piediluco, and it's a little hill in the middle of a valley surrounded by big hills. And I just thought it was so beautiful to look at. And um, it, I think only about 1,200 people live there. It's really the same size as Jove, I believe. This is just another example. Now we do have fields here too, just like in Tuscany, and usually we have lots of crops going on. Um, so it's very colorful. You see the greenery of the trees and the greenery of Umbria, and then uh, it's peppered with either poppies or sunflowers, like in this case. This is uh, about 30 minutes from our farmhouse. And I cannot forget to show you the food of Umbria. Now we have lots of food in every region in Italy and I am a culinary tour person. So I will take you to my most favorite places in any region you choose to go to with me. Umbria in particular is known for their truffles, white and black, uh, which is a dish to your left. And then of course, all of our meats um, from uh, purveyors here that are super local. People really love to shop local. 
which I really love. We're all from Portland, right? Or most of us are, so we, we know what that means. <laughs> and then uh, the dish on the far right is a homemade um, fettuccine or pappardelle, which is actually fettuccine that's a bit wider, uh, with wild boar, no tomato ragu on it. Just three examples of why it's so delicious to be here. <laughs> um, so see, we're already on the next spot. I'm going through them right, right to the point. Uh, finding the casale. Casale, by the way, means farmhouse in Italian, specifically for farmhouses in Umbria. So as you see that word, remember it means farmhouse, casale, and the legalities of such an adventure. So this kitty cat right here uh, was not one of the people, one of the, one of the uh, individuals I asked for help when I was looking for a casale to buy. But he's so cute. I just wanted to put, put him in this in this uh, in this slide for you to see. By the way, this little village is called San Gemini, and it is 30 minutes from Jove, and it is coincidentally where my parents live at the moment. So my really good friend Tom and I in October of 2019 uh, started here in this village where this kitty cat is because my parents were there. So I thought this would be a good jumping point to finding our dream investment but also home for us away from Portland when we wanted to 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 come visit and we're really good friends and we thought why don't we do this together so uh three ways to find to find real estate in Italy real estate agencies that's normal you do that just about everywhere in the world I think but you have to understand and there's more to it than this so ask me questions anytime um, after the show, <laughs> um, the real estate agencies have contracts with sellers. So not all real estate agencies have access to an MLS system like we have in the States where they can cross uh, share listings. So if you're going to look for something in one area, you go to one real estate agent, you look at their listings, you go check out things with them, and then you go to the next real estate agent and you look at that list. It's just something that you should do. Otherwise you might miss out on availabilities. Some real estate agents are friends and they might share, but you never know. So look at, talk to every single one of them in an area that you're interested in. Or uh, another way, and this is all the things we did, Tom and I did. Uh, number two is uh, make sure you have an Italian speaker or somebody uh, that you trust with you to drive you around the area to look for for sale by owner um, signs, because some sellers have had their properties for so long and they just perhaps don't trust the system or don't feel like putting it up um, at a real estate agent's listing, um, so they will uh, just put a for sale sign in front of their property and you'll have to call that number and you'll have to speak in Italian. And so someone uh, who speaks Italian would probably be the best bet for you in this case. I speak Italian, so I was able to do it with Tom. <laughs> and then the third way is talk to the locals. Just simply go to whatever village is closest to the area you're interested in uh, or city that you're interested in and go to the local bar. Now the local bars in Italy are where we have coffee in the morning and then drinks in the afternoon. They're the same place for all of that all day long. And they're just called bar, even for coffee, it's called bar. So you go into a bar in the morning, you have your cappuccino and you just ask the bartender like, hey, do you know of anybody selling anything? that's this style that I'm looking for. And they might know, and they might know so-and-so. They might make a call for you. And I'm telling you this because guess which one won for us? Number three. <laughs> so for some reason, the next slide is not going over. There we go. So here is one more picture of Umbria. This is Narni. It's a, it's a village of Narni. It's only about 20 minutes from Jove. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is because it shows you the hilltop village on top, one palm tree in the middle, which I thought was amazing. And then uh, the, the beautiful um, forested uh, um, mountainside. And I'm showing you this village because this is a village where Tom and I went to eat on our last day of our search in October, 2019. We searched for, I don't know, I want to say a week to 10 days. And we kept looking at things and they were just not perfect enough for us. It's not exactly what we wanted. 
um, we wanted small, we wanted charm, we wanted history, we wanted stone, we wanted a swimming pool, we wanted acreage, we wanted a view. I know that sounds like a lot, but those places do exist. And uh, uh, we ended up getting really hungry <laughs> the last day and a little bit frustrated because we, we said, oh, we're gonna have to come back in a few months and maybe try again. And uh, there was this restaurant in Nadni who, that had a really funky name and it's the reason why we chose it. The name is La Gallina Liberata, which means the liberated chicken. I thought that was the funniest name and we, that's how we chose to go eat there. We'd never been there before. We ended up meeting the owner who is the gentleman on the far right, Alessandro is his name. Obviously he has a little mask on because we did go visit him again or I did you know, after, during COVID later on. But um, he is an incredible guy. He was asking after a bottle of wine, he's asking us what we were doing there. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, we're looking for a farmhouse. And I told him everything. And he stopped everything he was doing and said, I am selling mine. And I thought, stop it, describe it. Cause I wasn't, we, we didn't even believe it anymore. We said, okay, we haven't found anything. There's no way, just describe it. And he described it. So we set up two days later for him to show it to us. I'll show you in a second what it looks like, but on April 29, 2022, two years after that chance meeting, two years during which COVID hit and nobody was selling and buying anything, I purchased, we purchased the farmhouse from Alessandro. There he is again, we are in Rome and we've signed the papers and he's been paid and he's giving me the money. So our attorney, which is key, by the way, you should have, uh, a really fantastic attorney to help translate paperwork and and make sure that there are no liens on the property and just make sure all the all the taxes are in. you know you, you have to have an attorney and if you're interested uh, I, I have the name of, of ours who helped us we were in her office and we signed the paperwork and that's how I ended up finding this beautiful place just because we wanted to eat at the liberated chicken on the last day so Java and surroundings. The reason why we were so excited about this place is because look at this map. It shows the blue, obviously, I think you've used Google Maps before. It shows the Rome's airport uh, at the beach down below at the bottom, all the way up to what is labeled home, which is here, which is the Casale delle Quarche. It's only an hour and 14 minutes by car. There is kind of like a 405 or 101, you know, there's there's a ring road around Rome, so you don't have to, you don't have to go through Rome in the traffic at all. You go around Rome and then straight up on the autostrada, so the freeway, like I-5 would be, I guess, for us, um, all the way to Java. Very, very, very easy, very simple to get to, um, which is one of the things that attracted us to this area. It's not so isolated. It's easy to get to, easy to find for anybody. Here is Java. This is the symbol or the, the, the symbol of Java, which is laurel leaves and an olive tree and a, a crown. Uh, and you can see Java on the picture on the right at the very back on top of the hill. And uh, that's the beautiful castle that is about to uh, open up to the public as well. Very excited about that. Everybody's been remodeling here, I guess. We remodeled the farmhouse and the castle people remodeled the castle. We're all gonna open, and, and then Amber into remodeling their restaurant. We're all opening at the same time. This is really exciting. <laughs> here are just the two quick photographs of Java, the village itself. This is actually winter time, so it's a little cloudy, uh, but it's so, it's so pretty. The, the castle again is right there. It's white, pristine, beautiful, 365 windows, one per every day of the year. Uh, cannot wait to go visit. Uh, I'm actually going there next weekend, I think, to see it for the first time. Um, church on the left and a, a lovely little piazza where the town gathers. And here's just a, another, just one quick picture of um, no cars are inside of the historic district um, uh, just below the castle. So it's just really pretty. It's very, very, very peaceful too. So it's lovely. It's lovely, lovely. 
And uh, really quickly, the other reason why uh, we loved this area is because Jove is the little town that you saw with the, with the castle, but also we have Orvieto, which is a, a, a rather famous Umbrian city. It's a little bit bigger. I think there are 15,000 residents there, but it doesn't seem so big. It's still a typical Umbrian village, which is up on top of a hill. And there's a cathedral there. Uh, and lots of incredible wine. Orvieto Classico is a wine that is endemic to that area. And, um, and of course, Rome is an hour away. People know very well, I think, Siena and the Chianti region. All of those are just about an hour, just over an hour away from here by car or train, uh, because we have a train station right here. And then Narni, uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes away, is where we met Alessandro, where the liberated chicken is, which you should go eat there. It's fabulous. And then Montepulciano, you've heard of as well. It's another wine region. Uh, and then Civita di Bagnoreggio. I threw it in there because it's super trending right now on social media. And I'll show you a quick picture of it. It's just a village that, a village uh, perched on top of a hill too. It's very picturesque. But lots, and, and there's so much more than this. Assisi, where St. Francis is from. All sorts of beautiful, incredible things to see around here. But we're right in the middle of it all. Florence, I didn't even put Florence. Florence is an hour north of us. So <laughs> um, just quickly, here is the hilltop village on the left that I was talking about, the Civita di Bagnoreggio. Things like this exist right here on, on this earth. And um, it's very cool because in about 20 minutes, you, 30 minutes, you can go to it and visit. The cathedral in Orvieto and myself <laughs> is on the picture on the right. It's very impressive. It is uh, gold gilded and marbles everywhere. And the Pope actually comes here quite often and gives his, um, uh, his masses. Uh, you'd have to look at the schedule for that, but he does still come up here, which is great. And then uh, another reason why I love this area is because that's me in the middle in a robe in November in Mineral Hot Springs. I mean, it was sunny and the hot springs are, are hot and they are great for your uh, skin uh, and, and it's super relaxing and, uh, and they're only 20 minutes away from us in Viterbo. Uh, Sun Gemini, you remember the cat picture from earlier uh, on the left to that arch is a Roman arch, which is the entrance to the Sun Gemini village. And there's a little coffee shop right there. Uh, the owner's name is Carlo, he's fabulous. So just grab a coffee or a or uh, bubbles from him. And then to the far right, that's me. My mom took that picture of me. Uh, it's a 2000 year old Roman city called Carsule. And it is five euro to get in there. And you have a, a beautiful Roman road. That road that you see leading to that arch is the Flaminia. It's, an, it's a historic Roman road. And then the entire village is there or city is there for you to explore at your leisure. You can picnic there if you'd like. It's only 10 minutes from us. It's incredible the stuff you can have around here. So renovation. Let me show you the farmhouse really quickly. This is what we saw when we first saw the place. Not bad. I mean, structurally, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, there are some, you know, a couple of uh, pots and of plants that hadn't been tended to and weeds growing everywhere. And there were dead trees, unfortunately, that we needed to remove and, um, and some remodeling inside, you know, painting of the walls, things like that. We were very lucky that this place was well taken care of by, their, by the family that had owned it for so long. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID, with the pandemic, you know, it, people just became down and closed off and things weren't really being done to upkeep this place or other places around here. And um, Alessandro needed to get rid of it. Um, and uh, he was so glad that it was us who purchased it because he knew that we would not change the feeling of the place and the soul of the place. But change we did. <laughs> A little bit. I mean, uh, we didn't do a full remodel of the master bathroom because that was very, very, very outdated. The kitchen remained the same, but we did upgrade all of the appliances because as a culinary tour guide, and my boyfriend is a sommelier, so he's a wine expert, and we love to cook and we love to eat. So we wanted to make sure that the kitchen was doing just fine and updated. Um, so we did that and then we put air conditioning in. Uh, so, you know, lots of work like that. I, I wasn't a time crunch. 
Uh, so we purchased this April 29th. I believe we started work on it once I found the contractors, local people. I, I needed, you know, I, with the help of, of, of Alex, of my boyfriend, um, we sought local people that were able uh, to do it real quick because I really wanted uh, to have a grant or soft opening October 2022 or five months later, which is unheard of in Italy. Things get, things take so much more time. Uh, but we did it. We pushed it. I was here the entire time. I helped uh, procure some of the materials. I went to get the tiles from the tile guy. You know, I was like, I, I got it. You guys lay it and I'll go get it. You know, so it was a teamwork situation, but, um, but it, it worked out just fine. Here's a before and after of the kitchen. So as you can see, structure of the main kitchen in the main stone house, as you can see, structurally, totally fine. Not much I had to do there, but I did paint, we did declutter, and the owners did take their belongings away, of course. But there was a peninsula in this kitchen, which was just not open up, open enough for us. And there was no big refrigerator with ice machine. So I made sure that I made room for that. <laughs> um, I hooked up the gas. So we have a six burner, excuse me, a five burner gas. Uh, stove top and and uh, everything is brand new in here now, as you can see but the tile was fine everything was fine and I put a plant in here is the bathroom remodel again it went from dated and it worked just fine for the people who were living there before us but I really needed to make sure the plumbing was was well done and and I had a shower and a bath and a little bit more light, a little bit more vibrancy. Uh, so this is what I designed. And, um, and the, this is the master bed, bathroom. I think it's beautiful. And uh, here is the outside. Now we cleaned up, we got rid of the tree that was falling down. Um, the tiles on the roof are original of the farmhouse and, uh, and they are just fine. We checked them, everything is fine. The fireplace in the middle is incredible. It works great in the winter time. Uh, this is not just a summer place, it's a winter place too. And, uh, and then of course, for the summer, there's the sparkling swimming pool, which let me tell you, when we started working on this place, the pool had been neglected. So the water was murky, was green, and we actually were worried that we would have had to retile it. But actually we got it cleaned and, and everything was fine. And we fixed that before we fixed everything else in, in, the, in the farmhouse because we knew that we'd want, we'd want to use it for a break while we were working. So first things first, pool. And then we did the rest. pink flamingo I brought from the States because I thought, why not? <laughs> Welcoming guests. So finally, we have people who, uh, people are able to come here to us. This is in the fall, it's the driveway, it's beautiful. I uh, added lights along the path so that it, it's all lit up at night. Uh, as well. And um, this is the fall too. You can see a little doggy in the background. Her name is Bella. She does not come with the farmhouse, but you might meet her at check-in and check out every once in a while. Olive trees. It's clean. It's beautiful. Uh, this is us. These are your hosts. It's me and Alex, the sommelier I was talking about. And uh, we will greet you. We will welcome you here. We will make sure you, you do, uh, you're doing well. And we will ask you if you want any entertainment with culinary things and wine things. Otherwise, uh, you will get the keys and you can do whatever you want. You can just relax with your friends and family here. And uh, here, just a quick, I'm sure these questions will come up later. So I just thought to put them in the presentation real quick. We do have two separate buildings and one of them is a stone house with a master king bedroom. Uh, the den is attached with the sofa, the blue sofa that opens up to a very, very kind of splurged on, uh, on the sofa sleeper. Um, there's nothing worse than opening up a sofa and just having an uncomfortable night, but that is very comfortable. And then a master bathroom that you saw earlier, the full kitchen, and then the half bath. We have a big table, dining table, I'll show you later, uh, for 12 people. And then we have the second building is the pool apartments. We have two apartments up there. They're about, I want to say, 100 feet up the driveway where the pool is. And there's two apartments that are mirrored 
Um, they are identical to one another as far as structurally, but they're decorated slightly differently for individuality. They each have an, a little kitchenette, so, uh, and a bathroom, um, and a, a big bed, and the same very comfortable sofa sleeper. So you can be independent from the stone farmhouse if you want to come with a couple of friends and you want your separation, you know. <laughs> um, and then we cannot forget the greenery outside. The whole point of Umbria is that it's the green heart, right? So huge terracotta terrace overlooking the entire valley below. We actually have a, a 360 degree view here. I mean, no matter where you turn, you see space. Um, and land, so it's actually really beautiful. The swimming pool you've seen already, but that's another angle of it. Um, and then we do have a washer and dryer too, which is really cool, but in the, in the cool, weird, quirky Italian style, the washer and dryer are outside behind the farmhouse, behind the stone farmhouse. So you go outside and you see two industrial washer and dryer machines out there. It's really, it's really funny, but they work great <laughs> and you can use them. And then, uh, and then you have, you know, lounge chairs here and there where you can just relax with your glass of wine. Uh, That's actually one of our partners, Patrick, and his, uh, and his uh, girlfriend, Heather, over there hanging out at the bottom right. Last October, they love it. Um, here, really quick, is to show you the dining table. I did not show it to you earlier, but as you can see, this is something that Alex um, organizes for you if you want. Is we have, a, or or you don't have to as long, but you, I wanted you to see that you can have your group enjoy meals together inside or outside, depending on the weather, depending on whether you want AC or you know dining out fresco. But it's really beautiful. Um, and bonding experience to be able to do with wine and food. Um, this is an example of the delicious fresh foods and, and it's all made locally. Uh, Alex knows the butcher, Alex knows the purveyor of the vegetables. Um, and of course our neighbor Giorgio gives us very often, I mean, sometimes too often fresh eggs from his chickens. You do hear chickens when you stay here and they're fresh eggs. Um, it's really cool. Everybody's, you know, in, in together. Um, and this is one of the tastings that we did and we did it outside with, um, four American friends. Uh, well, we became friends. We met them in Rome and we said, why don't you come up to Umbria and we'll do a tasting. And they said, yes. So they took a train <laughs> and they met us there and it was, it was so great. Now we're friends. Now we're going to go visit them in California next month when we go down. So come see us. Come see us in Umbria. Uh, I cannot wait to host you here. I hope I didn't go too quickly through all this stuff, but I have a time limit and I can talk a lot. Um, and uh, like I said, Natalie will have all the information and, and look and look who appeared. Okay. Yeah, after. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alex. It was really great. You're welcome. I love the overview of the area as well. So <laughs> people can see if they come, what they're going to see. And so. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a little transition here, so be a little patient with me. I have to reset uh, a couple of things. And we're going to go into the update that was sent to us by Amber and Dahl. So just a minute, and I'm going to share my screen. I'm excited about this. Yeah, let's see. Maybe. Uh, great, great presentation, Alicia. Just thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I I don't see I don't see who said it, but thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, where I need everyone. Just give me a minute to find. Oh, here it is. Okay, okay here we go. Here we go. Share. This is an update from our friends Dal and Amber with the restaurant that's opening up. Our friends, I'm so excited. We're all good neighbors. Okay, we go. We're all good neighbors here. So this is the inside of this is the inside of the restaurant and you can see they picked this real beautiful blue color throughout um, and they just wanted to show some of the things that they selected the artwork and um, now we're going into the cave which they showed last time when we met with them in September you can see actually under my house, it looks like this as well. There's all these caves in all of this area under all of the old towns. 
And here's how it looks after with the plaster and the nicely tiled floor. What an amazing difference that it makes with the lighting. I actually got to go inside of here last year, um, but they've just made an amazing amount of progress since even since I saw it. And here's their wine cellar, some examples of the wine cellar. Here's what it looked like when they first bought it and then the inside of the dining room. And now you can see the amazing transformation, but they left some of the original stone behind that was underneath that you can see what was there before and how it looks after. And there's one of the workers <laughs> sitting in the bathroom with all the beautiful fixtures that are made in this area. I think this is where the kitchen wound up being. The arch ceilings with the nice lighting that they did to light up the arches as well. This is just up the road from here, very close by. Again, some of the beautiful artwork that they have. Example of how the food will look and then stairs going up into the second level of the dining room. It's really amazing the craftsmen around here, the transformation that they can make in some of these buildings, starting with really kind of a pile of rocks and turning it into the one <laughs> beautiful structure, right? Okay. And there's Dahl, who we met in the presentation in September. He's talking to us about their plans. And he's there talking with the cook and the architect about what they're going to do. And they're picking out the colors. Yeah, I'm sorry they couldn't be here today. They just weren't able to make it, but they sent us these pictures. And then they preserved all the beautiful wood beams, collection of antique mirrors, some more of the artwork. Really beautiful, represents the Umbrian countryside, I think, what they picked. And back again to Umbria, jo town of Jove, and then Alice wanted to point out that she's right here on the left, but you just can't. So we'll get some more information from Amber and Dahl, bring them on to another presentation. Um, but that was just a little brief update and they are doing soft open in March, and, no, April, mm -hmm. and then they're doing their actual open in June. So with that, I'm going to stop the share. Over oh, here. Yeah. Let me unmute this. I think. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Why is it? There we go. Okay, so questions. I'm so excited. Like I said earlier, I could have gone forever, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first question is um, how did you source the materials for the casale? And were you able to use local products and supplies? Because uh, as I mentioned in this area, they are have incredible products made of wood, stone, and um, metal for building in making the property look authentic. So talk about how you went through that process. Oh, yes, that's a good question. Because as you, I think, as you, as you understood from the video and then the presentation, the point of the stone farmhouse is to preserve its history and its beauty and its authenticity and to keep it rustic and charming and so that we honor the past of it and the, and the family that has owned it for so many hundreds of years but you know up, upgrading and updating it with modern amenities so in order to keep the charm and the, and the rusticness is that a word uh, of it, we did look for local um, for local artisans creating uh, local tile and the wood. We had to source the wood. That was actually the most difficult part because I really wanted slab wood and wood for the mm -hmm. shelvings in the in the bathrooms and the kitchen. Uh, but it was difficult to come by because it's not America. We don't have lumber stuff here anymore it's just it's it's um it's construction lumber but it's not slab it's not full-grown trees anymore you know because they don't exist anymore so it was really difficult to find uh, uh people 
to provide exactly what I wanted. And that made me learn about what was actually available here, what was true and real and local to the area. So by talking to people, I asked, who's the tile guy? Who's the wood guy? Who's the glass guy? And, uh, and uh, most uh, things that I put in here are local and made yeah. by hand and some things I couldn't, but. So. And, I, and I know like in our renovation project as well that I really like being able to buy from the local distributors instead of going to some of the big box there are some big box hardware stores yeah, here sure there are yeah. I really like to support the local businessmen because they really add so much character to this area so I want to keep them here <laughs> so yeah and they're yeah. so most of the time they're your neighbors I mean most they are they exactly. come by all the time yeah. they see yeah. the gates open here and they know that I'm here and they just drive on by and they say hey how's it going how's that wood hanging out for you how's it well the plates are doing great on the wood thank you yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so the uh, the next question I had is, um, do you need to rent a car, and how is it to drive around in this part of Italy? Can you talk about yes, that? good question. Um, so you saw the map that I made, the Google map that I copied onto one of the slides. So from the airport in Rome to here, it's an hour and fourteen minutes. You can take a train to come up here or down if you're coming from Florence or Milan or something. Um, but I would highly recommend you rent a car. I think Natalie. Uh, can attest to the fact that it's very easy to rent a car from Hertz exactly. or Sixt or whomever you, or somebody local at the airports at the local airports and uh, and just have it for the week because you're going to stay here in a place like this not for a night or two probably for a whole week make it your home and your hub and have your car so that you can hang out here and then visit the villages and visit, visit the cities and just be free to move around with your group or by yourself. Mm -hmm. Grocery stores are uh, less than two miles away. And by all means, you can walk two miles and get, you know, your milk and your wine, but with the car, it's a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it is really easy to get a car at the Rome Fumuccino airport. You just walk across the breezeway, grab your car out of the parking lot. You don't even have to get on the shuttle, mm -hmm. take the car, mm -hmm. um, get on the freeway and you're here in a little over an hour and it's a very easy freeway to drive because you drive around Rome so you're yeah. kind of on a nice wide open freeway use your google maps and it'll take you right here so mm -hmm. it's nothing to be afraid of I think it's actually easier than driving through Portland <laughs> so yeah it's, true. it's yeah. true and then and driving around on the country roads around here between the towns is really oh, easy it's like so just nice. really relaxing driving so I wouldn't be afraid to rent a car here. It's true. Okay, so I'm going to look at the chat a little bit. And so um, one of the, Kathy had asked how we, you had found the property. I think you covered that pretty well in the- I think so. I um, you yeah. know, talk to the locals too. <laughs> yeah. I'm available for in-depth you know, answers if you want to see. Yeah, if they want to contact them. you, they could talk to but you. But I think that, yeah. yeah. Talk to the locals, that's what won for us. That's for sure. <laughs> And someone, uh, Joey mentioned, I love the stone chimney. It's actually, actually, I was wondering where it's, did that stone come from? Because it's, it's the very stone particular. Inside or, or the, the threshold? If you're talking, I'm going to spin it or not. Yeah, yeah, I should show the threshold because okay. it's really fantastic. So that beautiful thing right there, thanks for mentioning it, um, is the original uh, of the home from 1700. And it's huge heavy solid slabs of travertine oh, which unfinished yeah, travertine unfinished yeah. just straight up from the quarry mm -hmm. and then stacked one on top of another to form the fireplace that's beautiful it that is, is amazing. very very big yeah. you can almost walk into it but not really it's not one of those but it's really really big it's fantastic thank you <laughs> okay and then um kathy's question can you provide a sample of a culinary tour are you based at the at the Casale? Oh, and um, and do you operate from here each day? Oh, that's yeah, so cool! So, like just if you, yeah, I I uh, I'm happy to give a lot more detail um, if you contact me directly and Natalie. Again, we'll have my contact information. But my um, my culinary tours uh, are based out of anywhere you want to go in Italy. So my business is an LLC based in Oregon. And what you have to do, what anyone have to do is contact me. 
uh, via email or call me and say, I'd like to go somewhere in Italy uh, by the beach in the summer. Where do you recommend, with six people, six of my friends or something, what do you recommend? Um, and can you do it, uh, you know, in the summer? Tell me about it. And then I would create um, a tour for you. So in, uh, lodging is included, uh, food is included, cooking classes are included, and me, myself, I will come with you and I will be your guide along the way. I will be your translator, your photographer, um, and your friend. Uh, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll be one big, beautiful, organized package for you and yours. So it's not necessarily based out of the farmhouse all the time, but one of my tours is from two of my tours per year is from here. So you would stay in my farmhouse and we would eat here and we would eat around here and we would sample the wines around here. Another tour that I create every year, twice a year is in Sicily. We go down there uh, and we do the same thing I would hear, but down in Sicily. Another uh, few tours I do in Rome because it is an overwhelming city. People yeah, go definitely. to all the time, definitely. but there's so much that you can miss or too much to do. So. So uh, I guess to answer the question is, uh, come to me, uh, talk to me about your wants and needs. I will create something for you. It's at least one week, if not more, all organized. You just have to get yourself to Italy and then we'll meet and then we'll do it all. And it can be based out of here or Rome or Sicily or Tuscany or Puglia. Uh, super fun. Right. <laughs> uh, there's two questions um, that are a little bit um, similar from Michaela and um, oh, and Joey. So, uh, can you walk to town? And how's how uh, far are you? you how far from the house? house? Yeah, you can definitely walk to town. Uh, in fact, we were just talking about Amber and Dahl's restaurant opening up here really soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a rent a, a rented car, which I highly recommend, you can all get in the car and drive less than two miles up the hill to the village of Javit, park right there under the castle and walk maybe 200 feet to their restaurant. Or you can hike from here from the farmhouse all the way to Javit and back. And that's a, a zigzagging kind of two lane dirt road. So it's not so much a trail trail here, uh, but it is uh, a dirt road, packed in dirt road in the woods. Uh, and it's a, a three, kilometer so it's right. almost because, two miles up and almost two yeah, miles down. because you're right next <laughs> to uh, they call the Camino di San Valentino so See? it's one of the Caminos in Italy of which there are I don't know maybe a hundred <laughs> so and it makes you've it, done so many of them know, I've done a lot of them and then it uh, makes a ring around Joe Bay and yeah. it actually I think it actually goes uh it connects with Amelia, I believe. It, it connects with another city because you can walk on it like all day. Yeah, it's but, true. Right, it's, you can it's go for the, days on the Camino. Yeah. So we're very so, close to Java. You can walk there. You can drive there. Um, the grocery, one of the grocery stores is there actually. So you would have to drive there um, or walk there. So it's just so pretty. We're just a small community. We all see one another too. <laughs> and then um, we have a question, but someone asked most rental cars are manual transmissions so that's a consideration so uh they're starting to get more automatic yes um it does cost a little bit more mm -hmm. but uh i would i would recommend it because you know when you're here and you're distracted by everything because i can drive a manual transmission but i always get an automatic because i just figure it's it it just takes away from yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm asked this question quite a bit from mm -hmm. my people from my from my um, clients who come with me here to Italy. Once they leave my week with me, they go off on their own doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. But they always ask me for advice, and they are concerned about the manual. Um, I drive manual. I grew up driving, and my car right now is manual drive. But if you, I highly recommend uh, using more international rental car companies you know, not so much local. And that's yeah. something that I wouldn't, you know, I, I love local, but the local guys and gals are not going to have the automatic cars readily available. Right. So Hertz, Sixth, Budget, all of those will have the right. automatic cars available. And if you, I, I always book, a friend of mine told me about kayak.com and that you can find some really great deals on cars there. I always start there. Yeah. yeah. And they, because they, they show for all the companies, mm -hmm. I 
I tend to try to avoid the names of companies that I don't recognize. So I do stick with, like you said, yeah, part yeah. of the budget because some of the other ones, the terms of the contracts are a little strange mm -hmm. and you might like get a contract and you find out, well, you rented the car, but you can only drive it 50 kilometers a day. Otherwise they're going to charge you more. <laughs> so, and get travel insurance. Get travel insurance. Get travel insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's keep going. So okay. um, are there, Michaela asked, are there bikes at the house? Good question. Um, we actually were, is that, I mean, if that is something that would attract you to come here, I was wondering whether I should have bikes here or not, um, because I would, I would ride the bikes. So I think I'm going to buy some bikes. Maybe some. I think this question made yeah. me like make up my mind no it's true because i'm like well should i we have ping pong table by the way we have a ping pong table um we have badminton mm -hmm. rackets i really want to make a bocce ball court and then i was thinking what about bikes so i think i'm gonna get bikes thank you whoever has that <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love that. <laughs> then someone who's not identified by name says, mm -hmm. I love Deruda. That's the best ceramic city in, in Italy. It's true. Deruda is beautiful. I actually have some Deruda pieces here. Oh, where'd it go? I wish I had a show and tell. Mm -hmm. um, Deruda is uh, a village and right. it is just north of San Gemini. Remember the cat picture in the village of San Gemini with the little kitty? Where my parents live, Deruta is just about 10 it's, minutes north of that. It's not too far from Assisi, right? No, exactly. Yeah. So it is beautiful. And, uh, you know, you can find Deruta um, pieces uh, everywhere yeah. that we, oh my gosh, vintage shopping in Italy is incredible. <laughs> so you can actually uh, find antique Deruta places uh, for great price. And there's a history there, you know, so okay. I agree. Deruta is amazing. Can you speak to any of the unexpected bureaucratic challenges which would surprise an American trying to start a destination business? Yeah. Oh, God. Like licensing. How do you get licensed? It's hard. Okay. Number one, in order to overcome the bureaucracy of Italy, don't do it on your own. Don't do it on your own. Have an attorney who is... Uh, uh, an expert in both your own laws of your own country, which I'm assuming is all America at this point, and um, the laws of Italy, because this attorney will have to intertwine both in order to make something that's legal in both places. Lots of bureaucracy here. For, I'll give you just a quick example. This farmhouse I love my heart is in is in it. This this is just like my paradise here. But in order to get here, it took so long. So we organized an LLC in Oregon and an LLC equivalent here in Italy, which is an SLR. Okay. And they both own one another, basically. They're connected, but that is that part was attorney money like so whole worth it <laughs> because the banks had to communicate and um the businesses had to communicate about taxes and permissions uh by us the members here and the members there very complicated bureaucracy is not a i have a minute to talk about it kind of thing to talk about i'd be happy to answer more questions about my own experience doing this but if you're planning on doing anything here for business get an attorney that knows the laws. It's very complicated and it's long lasting, it takes forever. I'm actually still waiting for a couple of things for this farmhouse after a year. <laughs> How would you find such a person, would you say? Like, where would you start? Uh, well, my attorney is incredible. So, I mean, if you need somebody, real estate business attorney, let me know and I will give you her name. Okay. Uh, she's based in Rome and UK and Miami. So she is brilliant okay. at all three things. So um, they could go to your website and find your contact information. Uh, contact me personally yeah. from my website and I'll give you your information. Okay. And also I believe Dal and Amber have their attorney who helped them do their thing. That's there. right. They have a restaurant and a home that they built that mm -hmm. they, um, a little right. apartment and they have their own too. So you already have two that you can talk to. <laughs> Tried and true, right? <laughs> Was figuring out utilities complicated? Yeah, utilities were complicated. I mean, it's, it's again, 
creating an, an LLC in Oregon, it was two clicks of the of the computer and a hundred dollars later or something, and oh, you wow. have an LLC, right? And the same thing in the, the LLC here equivalent was crazy to get mm. going. We did it, but it was crazy. Utilities, same thing. Like over there in the States, you call, you know, yeah. PGE or whatever the electricity is in Oregon. You're like, hi, I, I like a hookup. You know, I got to turn my lights on. They're like, cool. What's your name? Here you go. You know, the other day we have a snowstorm and like my power went out and I called them at eight o'clock at night at five, uh, five o'clock in the morning and they were swamped because everybody had snow. Five o'clock in the morning, they were at my little house and it's tiny and it's not mm -hmm. in the posh area. So I thought they'll never come to me first. They did and they fixed it. It was incredible. So utilities here, crazy. I mean, I still have, I'm still working with the, the Wi-Fi to make sure that it took me 10 days to get the Wi-Fi going because one department was not working to the other department mm -hmm. and the other department was not working with the other department. And then I would call different people and they would all give me different answers. And, I mean, I, I even offered like coffee to my favorite person because I'm like, wait, stay on with me a little longer. Where are you located? I'll come to you. Let's talk about this. Help me with the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and all in Italian, you guys. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, for me, the city provided utilities like trash and water. Those weren't too bad. You could just go down to the community office and Those set are it. easy. But then, like with electricity, Ooh. the geometry How helped, much me set, yeah, helped me set it up. But then, like, if you don't uh, buy a contract that provides a, lot, a, a large enough amount of electricity, you turn a couple things on in your house and it shuts the power off I'm, I'm <laughs> because you can yeah. only pull a certain amount of electricity so I had to go back and uh, my sister and I had to go back and pay a couple hundred euros so that we could pull a, a, enough power so that we could have the stove on and lights on at the same but time it all <laughs> takes you so long to get done but who you would never encounter that in the U.S. Yeah. Where you would never, <laughs> and I think I might have to actually up at another level because mm -hmm. now we have more space coming out at the same yeah yeah so it's it's like peculiar things that you never would imagine I think it took me it took us like five years of different attempts to figure out how to get the internet set up and then finally when I was here for a long enough period of time and keep going back and forth, I finally- You gotta be on out. it. You yeah. have to be there and on it. That's why when I told you earlier, I remodeled in four or five months, that's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> because I was here and I was pushing them and I was being sweet <laughs> to them. <laughs> so we, why don't we try to wrap up in about okay. five minutes so that we'll do two more questions. Okay. Um, do you have to rent the entire house or are there other options for staying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking for a smaller group. Well, I mean, the idea of this, because we're not that big, we're not, we're not a big space. It seems like a big space. We have 10 acres, but, but we, the main stone farmhouse only has one master bat, uh, bat, excuse me, bedroom with a king size bed for two. And then the den has a pull out couch. So that's four people or, you know, a couple with a kid or two. And then the two pool apartments really only have one big bed each with a pull-up couch. So three couples would need all three places, really. So, and that's only six people. That's a small group as far as I'm concerned. But, so we would love for you to take the whole hotel, come in, come out, you know, that way there's privacy for everybody staying. But that being said, I have rented uh, um, the pool houses separate from, the main farmhouse before um, coming up in June. And it was a special circumstance and that worked out. It totally worked out. Okay. Just ask me. Okay. If you go online on the listings, you won't be able to do it that way. But if you go to me, then talk to me and we can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the last question, um, this is a good one. How hot does it get in the summer? What, really hot? <laughs> And then how often does it rain? So maybe you could talk about the climate. Summer, here. Maybe? I mean, in or, the summer, it gets rather hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get uh, Italy in general, we get in the summer, the, you know, like in the States, the Southwest gets monsoons and the kind of humid heat or whatever right. and it comes from the South. Uh, we get Saharan air. So we from get Africa. very yeah. dry, very hot mm -hmm. air from the desert. And it's, it's so, it's sweeping from down there so much that you actually get sand. That's right. You get this in sand. In it's really <laughs> crazy. So during those months, when we get those winds, it's the hottest. 
but it's actually just kind of hot altogether for about three, four months. The pool is amazing for that. And there is air conditioning. So no big deal. Yeah. But but the um, evenings are amazing because you oh, can be the out are so, so late in the evening at the, yeah. at the piazza. The breeze yeah. in the evenings really yeah. just everybody's outside. Everyone's it's an, outside. It's an outdoor yeah. country in the summertime, you know, and everybody's outside yeah. under the shade. And that's why we have awnings here and the breeze blows. But during the day, that, this is why we have the siestas in the right. Take right? your morning walk. You yeah. know, have That's your siesta. Part of the day and you're sleeping. It's then fun. you go out for a pair of tibble, a pair of tenna. That's right. <laughs> and then you have dinner and then yeah, it's, it's terrible here. It's really rough. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wrap up um here, but thanks for all the questions. There's a lot of variety of questions. I appreciate it. We sorry we couldn't get to them all. Um, so I just want to make a few thank closing you. comments. Yeah, and thank you, Alice. It was really fun having you here. So I hope maybe we can do something again. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so we're gonna um, end the recording here in just a minute. <laughs> Back to me, and uh, we'll have the we'll have the video recording up on YouTube. We'll send it out to everyone that registered. Uh, if you if you came in without registering and you just came in because you got the Zoom link. Um, we'll also post it on our uh, Italian Portland Facebook page so you can find it there. Uh, and so thanks so much for everyone for coming and watch our newsletter for more updates on new events coming up. And we'll try to do a few more of these live from Italy events if everyone liked them. And it was really fun uh, having you all join. So bye everyone. We're going to stop the recording and then we'll see you all next time. Great job, Natalie. This is so fun. Thank you. Oh, great. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you yeah. so much to both of you. That was amazing. Where's the recording button? <laughs> oh.